Jewish education is not simply about sustaining the group. That is an objective. But ultimately, uh, Jewish education is about orienting uh, the individual toward the world, toward uh, other human beings, toward uh, the mystery of the divine. There's a famous line in Judaism, Lador Vador, from generation to generation. And it's used in many different places, but in general, it basically is telling us that we have to pass on what we learn. How do children come to understand and love what it means to be Jewish, to know Jewish rituals, to learn Hebrew, to sing Jewish songs and lead Jewish lives? Judaism is an ancient heritage with a rich history and culture, but how can parents establish a meaningful connection to this tradition for a young child? Should my child learn Hebrew? Do I choose a day school or a synagogue school? Should I send my child to a Jewish summer camp? What kind of teachers and role models do I want my child to learn from? These are common concerns for Jewish parents. Of course, identity development can happen in many ways, but most often it is the family, the community, and the institutions of Jewish learning that provide the core foundation for a child's emerging Jewish identity. Together, they prepare a child to lead a Jewish life. One learns to be Jewish, certainly, just as one learns to be a Christian. The question really is the vehicles of uh, transmission. Uh, those vehicles, I think, are the family, uh, the community, and the school. We know in the American scene that young people go off to college, start their career paths, uh, will often find a mate, settle down, uh, get very involved in their professional life, and they disappear off the Jewish radar screen for many years. When do they resurface? They resurface when their first child is ready for preschool. And they have to make a decision about what kind of education and what kind of Jewish education we want to give our youngest child. Children have uh, a much greater sense of awe than we do as adults. Adults grow jaded. Children are still uh, endowed with a sense of wonder. And as uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel taught us, uh, uh, wonder is the beginning of uh, the religious experience. If, uh, if we're incapable of being astonished, we will never discover God. Children are much closer to uh, being astonished than adults. Why are you dressed up? Because it's Purim. You have to be dressed up for Purim. Why do you have to be dressed up for Purim? Because. Because you have to, Because. Because. Because I don't know why. I don't know why. What are you dressed as? A brat. <laughs> Lily is four and already quite aware that she is Jewish and that this is an important part of who she is. At very young ages, children are also likely to welcome God into their lives. They aren't wrestling with the concept of faith. God fits easily into the everyday landscape. I think God is like a spirit that when people like uh, might do something bad or something or they don't know what to do, God can like God God can like go into their head basically since he's a spirit and and, and give a strong influence on what to do. I think that God is everywhere. He can um be like a little part of him is inside <coughs> everyone and is all around everyone. God is like a random person, like one of us, and he doesn't even know that he's God. 
He's just like a normal person. Well, it's sort of like he's there to comfort you and be there for you with all your problems and you could just speak to him and tell him all the things that you're worried about. He's kind of like uh, um, my parents and sometimes he can get mad at you. <laughs> except he still likes you and also sometimes when you do a bad thing since you like don't feel good after that i think i think he like kind of feels bad for you that you made the wrong choice if family and synagogue rituals provide young children with a tangible connection to what being jewish and knowing god might mean many children are also aware from an early age that judaism has its own special language We've been working here at the Melton Center at JTS on a new project called Ma'ala, which is designed to teach early childhood Hebrew language immersion. The best time to learn a second language is when you're three years old and four years old. And it builds life intelligence and, and, and academic prowess besides learning the language. Ma'ala teaches Jewish cultural and historical knowledge to young children as well as the Hebrew language. We have an enormous uh, challenge ahead of us in uh, transmitting a, uh, uh, a living knowledge of the Hebrew language. That is the language uh, of the Jewish people, and uh, we have an obligation to sustain that language for purposes of the synagogue, for use in the ritual, and ultimately to relate to the state of Israel. Language is the soul of a culture. And I believe that Hebrew is the soul of Judaism. Many Jewish educators believe that teaching Hebrew to young children will cement their connection to their Jewish identity. These children are singing the Israeli national anthem, Hatikva. That is what Ma'ala is about, making those very, very strong connections with Jewish culture, with the Jewish religion, and with Israel. <laughs> If we want to become bagels and lox only kind of a tradition, then we don't need our own language. But in order to have a real authentic experience with Judaism, you must look at it through the lens of Hebrew. <laughs> For slightly older children, a specialized place of Jewish learning is private Jewish day schools. Here, students beginning in kindergarten can integrate Jewish studies with secular education. Yael Seidman teaches fourth grade at this Solomon Schechter day school. Well, I grew up in Israel, and uh, when I was in third grade, I remember putting a note in the Western Wall asking to be a teacher. Day schools make the Hebrew language and Jewish texts and rituals a part of everyday life. And day schools expose children to the rich context of Jewish and Israeli culture, dance, song, and art. Each one of the major denominations in the United States, the Orthodox, the Conservative, the Reform, has day schools that are being run under their aegis. But at the same token, there are community day schools which are run transdenominationally. The thing about our students here, they come from many, from different backgrounds. So you have conservative, you have reconstructionist, you have reforms, you have orthodox, you have modern orthodox, so you have all these streams, and you have to walk gently. One way for kids to respect 
the religious views of uh, other Jews is to go to school with them. So you've got issues that have to be resolved that are the key issues that hold communities together. What do we eat and how do we pray? The difference between this school and a public school is uh, all our day, all the things we do at our school is surrounding around the Jewish values. It starts from the moment they walk in, they put their kippot on. It's already a different attire than they was, were on the bus with other kids who've been dropped in a different schools in town. Um, the snack they eat at 10 o'clock has to be kosher and hopefully healthy too. The lunchtime, we all say the blessing after the meal. That's something that's mandatory. It is my duty to tell them about the Jewish laws, about what is proper, and what is accepted. Well, if you didn't have Jewish education, then you would never know your history of like the, your ancestors and what happened before and why you pray and why you do Shabbat. Elementary age children begin to develop nuanced ideas about God in the world and about God in their world. Praying and talking about God are part of everyday experience in school, sometimes through Torah class and always through daily prayer services or tefillah. Well, sometimes um, when I pray, um, I shut my eyes like during the really important prayers, and I get the goosebumps. And I think that the goosebumps are like God's presence. When I play, pray silently, um, and I don't have like voices around me, I'm sort of in like my own little circle and I can get closer to God. This prayer is from the Torah and I feel a lot closer when I say this one by myself because then like it could be my own special prayer to God. When you pray, it's out of respect to you and it's not just out of respect to God, it's out of respect to you and you can take the time and you can actually focus on something. So you're not just rushing around doing what you want to do and you're actually learning something yourself. Um, there's a prayer that we say to that in the morning to show to thank God for that. It's the Modet Ani and it shows um, how we thank God for um, letting us wake up. How does that prayer go? It goes, Modet Ani Lefanecha. If we're not going to talk about God in Jewish schools, where are students going to talk about God? Why should we cede it to the Christian world to talk about God? We own God just as much as Christians do. Why shouldn't we feel comfortable talking about it? And that's a big challenge for Jewish education. Modani is what we say when we wake up in the morning, right? So what did we do last time to pretend that we were waking up in the morning? We pretended like we were sleeping. Although enrollment is increasing, most American families don't rely on day schools for their children's religious education. Many families find it too costly, and a few don't have access to day schools. So many Jewish adults, when they think of their own Jewish education, remember their childhood synagogue and its religious school, today commonly called synagogue school. Synagogue schools have an opportunity to make a difference. You can do a lot of exciting things with the synagogue school because parents have no expectation that the synagogue school is going to teach their kids general studies. We have to provide a range of educational settings. There's no one setting that's good for every child or every family. Seventy percent of our children are in synagogue schools and they have to be centers of excellence. And they can do things in terms of the life of a congregation and the rhythms of Jewish life that sometimes day schools, which are kind of removed from the, um, the life cycle events, can't do. 
synagogue schools meet outside of a child's secular school between one and six hours per week, and they've introduced millions of children to Jewish experience, holidays, rituals, and the Hebrew language. Alan and I are going to walk around and help you, and you're just going to copy this. These first graders are beginning to learn the Hebrew alphabet. One early exercise is to copy their Hebrew names. So we're literally just beginning our study of Jewish history, okay? Here's a book for Will, Sam. As synagogue school students grow up, their Jewish learning changes as well. Coloring gives way to historical discussions, and students begin to develop a fluency.